to show you a diagnostic test of car images, because that's something we can all understand. So here we're starting with about one and a half million car images, and I want to create something that can split them into the angle of the photo that's being taken. So these images are entirely unlabeled, so I have to start from scratch. With our deep learning algorithm, it can automatically identify areas of structure in these images. So the nice thing is that the human and the computer can now work together. So the human, as you can see here, is telling the computer about areas of interest which it it wants the computer then to try and use to improve its algorithm. Now these deep learning systems actually are in 16,000 dimensional space. So you can see here the computer rotating this through that space trying to find new areas of structure. And when it does so successfully, the human who's driving it can then point out the areas that are interesting. So here the computer has successfully found areas of, for example, um, um, angles. So as we go through this process, we're gradually telling the computer more and more about the kinds of structures we're looking for. You can imagine in a diagnostic test, this would be a pathologist identifying areas of mitosis, for example, or a radiologist uh, indicating um, potentially uh, troublesome nodules. And sometimes it can be difficult for the algorithm. In this case, it's got kind of confused. The fronts and the backs of the cars are all mixed up. So here we have to be a bit more careful, manually selecting these uh, fronts as opposed to the backs, and then telling the computer that th this is a type of uh, uh, group that we're interested in. So we do that for a while, we skip over a little bit, and then we train a machine learning algorithm based on these couple of hundred things, and we hope that it's got a lot better. And you can see it's now started to fade some of these pictures out, showing us that it already is recognizing how to understand some of these itself. We can then use this concept of similar images. And using similar images, you can now see the computer at this point is able to entirely find just the fronts of cars. Uh, and so at this point, the human can tell the, the computer, OK, yes, you've done a good job of that. Um, sometimes, of course, even at this point, it's still difficult to separate out groups. Uh, in this case, even after we let the computer try and rotate this for a while, we still find that the left sides and the right sides pictures are all mixed up together. So we can, again, give the computer some hints. And we say, OK, try and find a projection that separates out the left sides and the right sides as much as possible using this deep learning algorithm. And giving it that hint, ah, OK, it's been successful. It's managed to find a way of thinking about these objects that separated out these together. So you get the idea here. Um, this is a case not where the computer is being replaced by a machine. Uh, sorry, the computer is, uh, the human is being replaced by a computer. but where they're working together. Uh, what we're doing here is replacing something that used to take a team of five or six people about seven years uh, and replacing it with something that takes 15 minutes for one person acting alone. So this process takes about four or five iterations. You can see we now have 62% of our one and a half million images classified correctly. And at this point, we can start to quite quickly grab whole big sections, uh, check through them to make sure that there's no mistakes. Where there are mistakes, we can let the computer know about them. Um, and using this kind of process for each of the different groups, we're now up to an 80% success rate in classifying the one and a half million images. Um, and at this point, it's just a case of finding the small number that aren't classified correctly and trying to understand uh, why. Uh, and during that approach, uh, by 15 minutes, we get to net 97% classification rates.